live with the community. This is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Development bi-weekly call. Today is September 1st. Where did the year go? We are getting into winter and fall. I am David Warner, your host for the call today. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about, everybody. We're going to have the latest on updates on the community. We're going to talk about PNP.NET libraries, PNP PowerShell, independent publisher connectors, we're going to see the latest on a number of samples, script samples, Microsoft Teams samples, Power Platform samples, and then what time? It's going to be picture time with Together Mode, everybody's favorite time of the call. And then we'll get into our all-star presenters of the day. Robin is going to talk to us about an independent publisher connector, OpenAI demo. And then Christine is going to show us how to animate SVGs and adaptive cars. Can't wait. These are two favorite topics. So we are looking forward to all of our uh, demos today. How can you participate and get more involved in this community? Well, uh, number one, we'd love to invite you to demo a solution or a technical pattern. Uh, this is something that we absolutely love to see. You're going to see two of our amazing community presenters today doing just that, and you are welcome to do that as well. Uh, we made it even easier on you. You can request a demo spot at aka.ms forward slash m365 pnp slash request slash demo. They say slash, yep. Make sure you get those slashes in there. You can contribute on GitHub, and so you're going to see some opportunities today about how you can be provided assistance on that if you're not overly familiar with GitHub and all of its weird acronyms and uh, phrases and names for things like forking and pull requests. We've got you covered. We're going to take care of you. And we want to hear feedback. We'd love to hear what's working for you. We'd love to hear maybe some things that you'd like to see improved. We just ask you to be, please be positive with your feedback uh, and keep it collaborative. Now, there are a number of resources that are available to you within the community. Uh, there are two different YouTube channels, developer videos and community videos. There are a number of open source initiatives and projects ranging from SharePoint to Office Dev to Microsoft Graph to Teams uh, to uh, CLI for Microsoft 365, all kinds of opportunities and resources available to you. And did we mention samples? Well, we have a plethora of samples, samples galore, covering from all up samples, to Teams, SPFX, Power Platform, list formatting, SPF extensions, so many samples for you to choose from. You can use them to start, to learn, uh, to get uh, a projects off the ground. They are all open source. And guess what? They are available for you to improve and contribute back to. And again, we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, you don't need to remember all these links. Nope, nope, just one. Uh, aka.ms forward slash m365 slash community will take you to uh, the community landing site, and that will give you access to all of these resources. In addition to resources, we've got you covered for a lot of developer community calls. So uh, the first up is the Microsoft 365 platform. Now, this has been on a summer break from July 1st to the 31st of October, which is yesterday. So the next call is it's spinning back up on the 6th of September next week. So uh, you can get that if it's not already on your calendar, aka.ms forward slash m365 dash adev dash call. A number of other sessions and community calls are available, Adaptive Cards, Microsoft Identity Platform, Office Add-ins, Power Platform, which is a monthly call. And by the way, plug, plug, that's going to be done live at the Power Platform Conference. And so uh, you uh, can see everyone that's going to be attending. If you're going to be there, we're going to have a live session for it. It's going to be fun. Uh, then we've got the Microsoft 365 Power Platform Development Call, which you're in right now. And we've got the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework. Those are uh, sibling calls, if you will. They flip-flop bi-weekly, and they are going to be available to you Every week, we are here, rain, shine, winter, holidays, you can count on us like the sun rises. So aka.ms slash m365 slash calls will give you access to all of these calls and uh, invites and direct links. So definitely take advantage. As we mentioned, the Microsoft 365 platform call is spinning back up on the 6th. Now, this is a unique and fantastic call because all the presenters are directly from the mothership. These are all Microsoft presenters. So next week, we're going to see Brian and Cameron talking about eDiscovery Premium APIs on Microsoft Graph. Alex and Vesa, who are those two guys? Oh, we love them. Alex and Vesa are going to be talking about SPFX feature demo and previews. And then Morel will be introducing Graph X-Ray. Graph X-Ray. So we're excited for that. Now, you can get your recurrent invite at aka.ms forward slash m365 dash dev dash call. Now, you're going to see all of these programs and resources and opportunities and talk about contributing back to the community. Well, it may be a little intimidating, maybe a little new to you if you're new to the community, but don't worry. We have a program that is just for you. It's called Sharing is Caring, uh, and it is here to provide you hands-on guidance. And what do we mean by hands-on guidance? Well, these are sessions that are live. 
and they're safe space, meaning they're not recorded, so you're free to ask any and all questions. You're going to work right alongside other members of the community, Microsoft MVPs, Microsoft employees, members of this community team. We're here to support you. We actually do these things right here with you in the call. So, for example, if you would like to submit to any of the sample repositories, for example, the Power Platform samples, we are going to walk you through how to do that and show you some tips and tricks along the way. Uh, if you'd like to write for the web, learn a little bit more tips or tricks there. Hugo Bernier and Emily Mancini are leading that. We've got one of those coming up here in this month. It's one of the newest sessions and available to you. So don't hesitate to take advantage. And by the way, again, if you're going to be at the Power Platform Conference, uh, which I know a number of us are, this is going to be a live session at the conference. We are going to be doing it in person uh, for everyone that would like to attend and learn more. Uh, so we're going to walk you through it just like a normal session. Still won't be recorded. Don't worry. Uh, and you're going to be free to ask any and all questions in person. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So check it out. And once we do uh, have you contribute and assist you, uh, we would absolutely love to recognize you in a formal and official way, uh, not just by word or appreciation, but actually taking action to show that appreciation by allowing you to register for what we call the recognition program. Now, this is a formal program that is partnering with Credly, uh, powered by Credly as well. Uh, that's Credly, that same organization that provides you those badges when you get your Microsoft certifications, yep, we have partnered with them, and it is no cost to you. All you need to do is register at aka.ms forward slash m365 dash recognition. Today's a new day, so we're going to be processing, or first day of the month, I should say, so we're going to be processing all those badges from the last month. And we're going to award you all and recognize you. It's a great way to show your managers, your clients, or both that you are making a difference in the community. Uh, and it can be associated to your LinkedIn profile. It can be associated to your uh, Twitter account. And uh, you can also put it on the fridge. I know I do, so I can show the family that I actually do something. Uh, and everyone will be proud of you. And it's a good way to be recognized. Again, no cost at all. Uh, we cover the cost. We do need you to opt in, though, uh, just once. So you can do that at aka.ms forward slash m365 pnp dash recognition. All right, let's talk about some of our programs. We're going to move into pnp.net libraries, and I think Paolo is going to cover that for us. Yes, thank you, David. Uh, so uh, first of all, we can see that the usage of our library libraries keeps on going like crazy, and we need to say thank you to the whole community for using it and for contributing to these uh, uh, libraries. In the last few weeks, uh, we have been managing some uh, pull requests, and we need to say thank you on the PMP framework side to Ronald Bowden, Daniel Pastor, Ole Ruhak, and uh, Fran Ball, as well as on the PMP core SDK side, uh, we had the contribution from uh, uh, Leonlin Ross, uh, Bert Janssen, uh, and Martin Linkstrill. Uh, we also want to remind you that we are going to release a new version of the PMP provisioning schema. It will be uh, the one of September 2022. So if you have any feedback, uh, please share it through the GitHub repo under github.com slash PMP slash PMP provisioning schema. And most likely in a couple of weeks from now, we will have uh, the new release implemented uh, in the engine. And then we will need to uh, add additional support for the provisioning part of the story. And I think uh, that's all uh, uh, for me. So back to you, David. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Paolo. Let's move on to PNP PowerShell. We've got them. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, uh, in PNP PowerShell, we are continuing work on the 1.12 release. So uh, we receive, uh, we, we see a lot of exploding usage as well. Like we saw 2.9 million downloads overall, and we are also seeing quite a lot of executions per day. Uh, what goes on in improving is we have improved the exception handling and the verbose messaging for the commandlet. So if you are provisioning a site collection or you're swapping a site collection, all that we are, we are showing a more improved messaging there when you're doing that. Uh, we also improved the group Microsoft 365 group related commandlets and also added additional two parameters to the tenant commandlets like display name of file viewers and display name of file viewers in SPO. So both of these commandlets uh, basically show the people who have viewed a particular file inside uh, the property pane. So we did that. Uh, what next? Uh, yeah, we'd love to absolutely hear your uh, thoughts on what you would like to uh, have from the PNP PowerShell. Uh, what, one thing that is is practically on the top of our mind is the .NET 6 support. So yeah, uh, .NET, 6, .NET 6 support is, uh, is coming very, very soon because right now the one that is 
based on dotnet core 3.1 it itself is getting out of support in december 2022 so we are really looking forward to update to the dotnet 6 and yeah, that's pretty much from my end. Uh, over to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Really, really inspiring. Awesome stuff. So keep up the great work there. Thank you so much. All right. Let's move on to Yo Teams and we'll uh, give the mic over to Stefan. Thank you, David. Um, so within Yo Teams, we had a little summer break. So there's not really much of news we can talk to you about. Uh, after we released the latest major version, which is 4.0, which, yeah, shifted things a little bit um we decided to take on a summer break and we just did a, a latest release 4.4.0.1 which fixed some issues but we're still in the process of yeah deciding what we're going to do next and we really are looking forward to help of you guys so if any one of you has an idea uh, has something uh, he or she wants to give us uh, on the, along the way uh, of yeah implementing into your teams please feel free to do so in our github repo as we see here, the top of mind are SSO support, um, Microsoft Draft kit, Toolkit support, uh, and a lot of more stuff. But if you have an idea or if you have an, a requirement, please let us know. And if you'd like to contribute, please feel free to do so. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, excellent work here. Yo Teams is so, so cool. I appreciate all the work. So definitely dive in there if you have any interest. Don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions as well. MGT, Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Uh, Seb is still out on uh, paternity leave being a new daddy, so congratulations to him. Uh, so it's been a little slow going here during summer, but uh, just wanted to remind everyone that MGT is awesome and available. Uh, they are uh, fluent UI components, generic components, theming capabilities, uh, and there are samples. The samples repository is live, so you can contribute to these, absolutely. You can access them at aka.ms forward slash MGT slash samples, and you're always welcome to help with issues. You can do that at aka.ms forward slash MGT forward slash issues. Now, let's move on to Independent Publisher Connectors with Natalie. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Independent Publisher Connectors, for those of you who don't know, are essentially Power Platform Connectors. They show up in Power Apps, Power Automate, and even Azure Logic Apps. And anyone can build and publish one to an existing API, as long as it's not on the platform already. So uh, just a couple announcements. We have 53 awesome independent publishers. 168 independent publisher connectors. Um, and in general, I would like to say that we have over 815 connectors on the Power Platform today. Um, in terms of new connectors, uh, recently we have five. We have uh, Joe Onwin's Fantasy Premier League, and then we have two new independent publishers who have joined, Richard and Simone. Richard has built Mockaroo, and Simone has built Mapbox. And then Troy has built two new connectors, Near Earth Object Web Service and USGS Earthquake Hazards. And this, in terms of these two hack, uh, connectors that Troy has built, this has been his recent theme here as well. So um, yeah, I guess we do have that one large theme now on our uh, platform. And if you're looking to uh, submit a connector, but you don't know which one you should build and submit, um, you can, when you go into our GitHub repository in the wiki, and I'll post the link in the chat as well, we do have um, something called Top Connector Asks. There's also some asks in the discussion as well. Um, so if you are stuck and you want to contribute, you want your name in the product, but don't know where to start, you can always go there. Thanks, everyone. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie. I think I need to go plug into that earthquake hazard being from L.A. So thank you, Troy. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some samples. We're going to begin with script samples and Paul Bullock. Hey, thank you, David. So uh, PMP script samples is your repository to go to if you've got PowerShell or Bash scripts that you want to either find an example for or a sample, uh, or even if you want to uh, submit to the repository yourself. So if you've got scripts that you want to share with the community, then this is your place to go. We've got over 250 scripts in 150, uh, so 165 scenarios. So that's different, um, different types of tasks that are covered by potentially one or more scripts covering things like the Microsoft Graph, CLI, uh, PMP PowerShell, SPM Management Shell, and more. There's there's really no limit to it, so uh, I can always expand the site and add the capabilities. If you've got a type of script sample that you want to share, um, I, I can reach out to me. I can always include that in the uh, in the site. Uh, so these samples are integrated into the unified solution generator. So those will 
appear there as well to get that that further reach, which is super, super cool. Uh, we've got a couple of new uh, samples and updates. So we've got a new sample from uh, Martin Lingstrahl uh, to get notified in Microsoft Teams for SharePoint health incidents, which is super, super cool. And uh, we've had an update for uh, CLI, uh, again, 365 scripts uh, to ensure that site asset library is created. So there's a, an update there. Um, I recently also added a feature to the uh, script sample site to filter by security. There's been a few few uh, conversations going on on Twitter, so I thought I'd add a filter so you can see anything related to that aspect. But thank you very much for all the samples and the contributions that you have made so far. You're absolutely awesome. Again, if you've got anything you want to contribute, feel free to reach out to me. The best place is Twitter through direct message. Uh, back to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. And yeah, congratulations. Just want to underscore how awesome this repository is. And again, what Paul said, if you have any scripts, and we all do, we've all got so many scripts that are little utilities and awesome, and we may think, ah, who needs them? Everybody needs them. Don't hesitate to reach out at all if you've got one you want to share. We want to include it and recognize you. All right, Team Samples with Bob German. Hey, everybody. Well, let's see. We don't have any new um, community samples this week, but I can't resist the opportunity to publicize the Teams App Camp that my teammates and I just finished working on. This includes a number of samples, actually, and it also hands-on instructions on how to put them together. And so you learn to port a website to Teams with Azure AD SSO, even if the original app didn't use SSO or Azure AD at all. Uh, it helps you with identity linking, messaging extension, configurable tabs, blah, 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 blah. Check it out at aka.ms slash app dash camp. And guess what? It's open source, too. So if you look at the GitHub issues, you'll see our wish list for additional labs. And if you would like to contribute a lab, I would absolutely love it. Um, you're welcome to do that with a pull request or better yet, contact me because I haven't written up all the contribution stuff yet. And I can probably save a little bit of time by pointing you at the guidelines. That's it. And hope to see some more community stuff next time. And back to you, David. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. I'm excited. I'm going to go get my tent and sleeping bag now for this Oops. camp, to be honest with you. And, so. and not only that, but the, the camera, I turn I always turn my camera off when I speak and on when I stop speaking because, I don't know, I haven't had enough coffee. I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right. Awesome. All right. One more before we get to everybody's favorite time, picture time, Power Platform Samples with April Dunham. Thanks, David. So we have not one, but two, but three new samples from Lama Aliwani. We have a great sample on email translation. So this particular one shows how to use the Microsoft Translator Connector to translate your emails automatically before sending it into a different language. Uh, they have a PDF converter sample that shows how to use the Encodian Connector to be able to take a file from your OneDrive, convert that into a PDF, and then a weather sample as well that shows how to use the Open Weather Map API uh, with a custom connector inside the Power App. Uh, to be able to show, get your geo coordinates and show the weather. So lots of great samples. Thank you so much, Lama, for your great samples this month. And if you have samples you want to contribute for Power Platform, go to aka.ms for slash Power Platform dash samples. We'd love to see it. Back to you, David. Awesome. Thanks, April. A hat trick of samples today in the Power Platform world. So excellent. All right. What time is it? Picture time. Let's show those cameras if you want to show the community how awesome you are. And we want you to. And Vesa will take over here in a moment to... Yep. Show everybody I off. I will. I will. I will. I will just get the screen back here. We have 50 seats in the room. Now uh, let's wait for the seats to fill in. Typically, we do get the 50 uh, on the scores. One more row will snap in in a second. There we go. Yes, excellent. A few more seats. A few more seats. And I will put the recording already on. No rush. No rush. No rush. You still have a few seconds. There was one more. Maybe one more seat. Let's do some hand fighting, everybody. We'll get to the awesome stars of the day and the actual demos, but we don't want to miss the together mode. So thank you, everybody, for being part of the community. We love you, and we always want to hear more from you around the feedback on what we can do to make your life easier. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being part of the community. Awesome. Thank you, Vesa. I mean, let's be honest. We the resources make their life easier. We just make it harder, right? It's like they got to endure us to get to the resources. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's All true, right, David. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Uh, so let's move into our superstar community presenters today. Robin is going to kick it off with an independent publisher connector demo on OpenAI. Robin, take it away. 
Okay, let's get started. Hi, uh, my name is Robin and it's an absolute pleasure to be here today, especially on the same call with Christine, because we share the same passion for SVGs uh, in, in Power Apps, Canvas Apps. Yeah, yeah, she's, uh, she's talking and I've learned so much from her samples, so you should definitely check them out as well. Um, but you can also, if you like that topic, check out my YouTube channel, uh, which has lots of SVG related stuff enough ads from me today i'm going to talk about a totally different topic david already said it we are talking about the, about the open ai gpt3 independent publisher connector i contributed natalie already told you how this thing works so this is available in all your tenants in all your power platform environments as long as it's as it's not blocked by DLP. So you can set this up in a few minutes yourself, what I'm showing today. Let's take a first look at OpenAI. You may have probably heard about the company does a lot of AI stuff. Uh, yeah, what is news uh, right now is one of the image generation um, models, the DAL E2 model, but that has no API probably in the future. Um, so today we're gonna talk about GPT-3. And what is GPT-3? It's short for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3. It's an auto-regressive language model that uses deep learning. I have no idea what all of this means. Um, I have no idea about AI, but uh, it's so easy to use. We're going to look into that right now because it produces human-like text. What can you do with it? Um, some examples, of course, this thing can do writing and probably some of the news you are reading are uh, already written by AI, probably by GPT-3, and this can do excellent fiction writing and is really creative. This thing you see it in the top in the picture is trained by 45 terabytes of data. So this thing basically knows the whole internet and at least the whole uh, of Wikipedia, lots and lots of books. So uh, it's really smart. It can bring up answers in a matter of seconds. Um, and this thing speaks multiple languages and you don't set the language anywhere. You just start talking to it in language and it will respond in the uh, according language. Um, while English works the best, German is also a language this thing understands. And also programming languages. And you will probably have heard um, of this thing before, the Ideas tab in the Canvas App Editor. And this is actually powered by this model by GPT-3. Of course, there's a little bit more magic going on in the background and it's uh, trained a little bit further so it can produce um, PowerFX. But uh, this thing can um, also uh, already, the standard model can already produce um, programming languages like um, HTML and others so before we get into demo time um i'm going to take you on a quick tour to get started and uh, get your api key to use my connector um, setting up an account is uh, done in a few minutes and these things actually cost money but when you set up your account um, you get three months of free trial and 18 dollars in credit which is uh, lots to play around with this stuff and get started. So you don't have to plug in credit card data. You can set this up in a few minutes and get going without paying a cent. And where you should start is uh, the playground because this is basically what uh, my connector can, can do. And this will look very familiar if we look into, uh, into Power Automate in a second. And first of all, um, we're going to plug in our first prompt. The, the, the string we are giving to the model is called a prompt. Um, I was basically doing the thing that was in the hint text, but I um, included a little bit more. So we are plugging in the prompt and we are getting a response back. This is, yeah. Um, probably more creative than I would have been and makes absolute sense for an ice cream shop tagline. And you see how easy it was. And basically we're doing the same thing with the API. There are some uh, presets there down here that you can also um, change in the API. You should get familiar with them through the playground. The most important is probably the engine that is in the background. And when you want to have human-like text, you should use the text DaVinci engine, which 
is the most uh, the most expensive one. But um, yeah, you can get familiar with the pricing and stuff. And as I said, you start with enough credits to play around a lot, even with this model. And um, you should also check out the examples um, right here because manufacturing your prompt is a science in itself. So let's look at one of my favorite examples. It's Marv the, where is it? Marv the sarcastic chatbot right here. We open it in the playground, get back to the playground and get your prompt plugged in presets a little bit changed, but not too much. And now we're going to look at a little bit longer prompt right here. Um, it's separated in the first step. This is the warm up um, where you just set the scene for the model so it knows what you're expecting of it. And then you double down on that with this is called a few shot uh, learning approach where you give on the spot a few examples um, that you make sure you get the results just as you want them. So we are giving here uh, like four results or, or anything and um, then we can plug in it's already everything set up we hit submit and marv gives an sarcastic answer right now uh, lots of fun to play around with this example and one more thing um, the model picks up really well when you use the column so you column marv column that it's a dialogue between um, you and the model itself because we told the model that it's called marv right now so this is a technique that works really well um, this isn't programmed into the model. It's an AI. They just found out manufacturing prompts in this way works really, really well. So let's jump into Power Automate first to see this um, through the Power Platform connector. We will set up a new flow. Probably not because it doesn't seem to work right now. So let's uh, give it one more try. Now it works. Just an instant cloud flow, which we will trigger manually and then add in a new step, open AI. And once again, this should be in your tenant as well. And this only has one endpoint, the most important one, the completion endpoint. And um, this is the defaults that I plugged in, which I would think would showcase it a little from the get go. We save it and test it for one time. So you see the same things you could, uh, you could uh, put in in the playground and continue. When you do it for the first time, of course, you have to set up a connection, enter your API key you get from the OpenAI website. Really easy to find. And we will run the flow and get our first response back through the API. There it is. And we ask what is the model's favorite animal and why? And the favorite animal is an elephant because they end intelligent and loyal, also very large and impressive, can weigh up to six or seven tons. Don't know if that is correct, but sounds impre impressive. Uh, I want to point out one thing. Um, if you are not too familiar with, with response objects or JSON objects you are getting right here, um, we get this response object and then it has this nested uh, object, the choices, uh, which can have multiple records and we generally want the first choice uh, and then the text property of that. That is uh, yeah important. We will look at the uh, at the source code in um, our second example in a second. And this is the chatbot. It's a little bit like the like the playground, like chatting with Marv, but in a yeah in a Canvas app you can use on your smartphone really well. And this is actually in the Power Apps samples repo. I will plug a link in the end. And if you like design, then you should listen really carefully to Christina's uh, presentation because this is from her from her new Morphic design kit, which I used uh, to to make this look more beautiful. I will plug a link at the end as well. So let's get started and ask the model what its favorite movie is. And the favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption. Indeed, a good one. And let's ask for a short synopsis of the movie. 
and we will get a perfect synopsis. It's a little bit longer. It's uh, ended because I set the, the yeah, end condition too narrow. I think it would have uh, wrote a little bit longer, but this uh, probably does make a lot of sense and the rest would have made a lot of sense as well. I want to um, add one more detail right here. Um, this thing picks up context phenomenally. So uh, I was just asking to write a short synopsis. And of course, the model knows that I want a synopsis about the movie Shawshank Redemption. And how does this work? Let's look a little bit here. Which prompt did we did we send before um, in each text we are sending again? We are including the whole conversation um, for the prompt so the uh, model can also pick up on the context and give better answers right here. And then we're going to look at the second little demo app. I have um, equally lots of fun with that. It's my sample data generator. Um, which sample data are we uh, want to generate right here? We want five capitals of European cities, uh, countries, sorry. And we get Paris, London, Rome, Madrid, and Berlin. This makes sense as well. So we were uh, uh, asking GPT-3 right here with our first call. This is a call to the Google image search. Um, so no GPT-3 involved in here. And we get a really nice sample image. We can scroll through some of them. And we can ask GPT-3 again for more information for a short description of the subject. And then we get a description about uh, Paris, London, Rome, and so on. And we can ask for another thing, and we will ask for famous sites in the city of Star. And then internally, the star gets replaced with the city. And we will add this sublist right here. So for Paris, we get Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame Cathedral, and so on which uh, seems to make a lot of sense. And yeah, I just love playing around with this and learning about uh, different stuff through this uh, app. So I'm having a lot of fun and we are looking for the wrap up. We are looking for the API call we are making um, through the Canvas app right here. We are calling the OpenAI independent publisher connector, the completion endpoint, which is the only one again available plugging in the Da Vinci model, and then we are setting it up just like we did it in the playground. We are using a warm up and then a few short learning where I provide for, uh, four examples of um, sample data that's, that is generated. And to process the data, it's uh, important for me to have it separated by semicolons, which I also say in the warm up. And um, then what I said earlier, we want the first um, set of data from the choices object. And from there, we want the text. That is what we're usually after. And then we are splitting the whole thing by semicolons. And that is where we're getting a nice uh, collection we can work with. Ah, couldn't find any data. That's sad, but here you can see that uh, data is displayed through this um, collection. And then, of course, we are doing um, exactly or similar things again with the description and the sublist and adding it to the collection. And that is it for my samples. I'm going to plug the links in the, in the chat and don't know how we proceed. Do we have time for some questions? Or but usually the, the questions get questions. asked. Yeah, the questions get asked in the uh, chat. So definitely, I believe there were some questions, Robin. Excellent. This is a super, super cool. Um, really love how you've created it to be a little bit more fun and showed some business use cases for it. Uh, really, really flexible in terms of what you can do with this connector. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely go check it out. Thank you for the links uh, that are in the chat. Uh, and by the way, yes, this was Chuck Norris approved. So just in case you were wondering. So excellent job, Robin. Thank you. All right, let's move over to Christine, where she is going to razzle and dazzle us some more on animating SVGs. Awesome. Thanks, David. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, my first PMP called presenting, so hopefully it all will go well. Uh, thanks, Robin, for the shout out. That was an absolutely mind-blowing demo. I literally cannot believe what I've just seen. Uh, that was literally 
Perfect. <laughs> so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how you can animate SVGs and why you might look at animating SVGs in adaptive cards. Going to talk about how to do it. We'll have a live demo and then we'll crack on with adding that to the SVGs uh, and the adaptive cards. So let me just quickly share my screen. Um, there we go. So uh, what we're going to do today, like I said, we're going to look at animating SVGs in adaptive cards. Now, I post a lot about SVGs in Power Apps and I thought, oh, I'm going to try and give that a go in adaptive cards. So before we navigate to the demo, uh, for anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Christine Kolodzewski. I work as a principal consultant at a company called Computer Center. I'm based in London in the UK and I tend to spam everyone's Twitter and LinkedIn feed a lot with uh, different geeky stuff. Um, that QR code is to all of my social so if anyone wants to connect with me, please feel free to scan that in. And I know that David will share that in the chat as well. So let's have a look at why we might use animation uh, or why we why it might be beneficial. So first of all, the stats. 90% of the information transferred or transmitted to our brains is visual. That means that uh, as long as you're not visually or cognitively impaired in any way, most of what you what your brain is processing is what you see, which means that naturally animations are going to be more attractive to the eye. Anything graphical is going to be a lot more attractive to the eye. Now, scientific research has proven that if you use graphical objects to support instructions or text, so by using uh, images and icons, your uh, performance or uh, your brain's performance is going to increase by 88%. So you're more likely to understand instructions or an application or anything else if there are supplementary icons. Now, I don't know about you, but I've put many IKEA furniture before, and I don't think I would have been able to do that without the uh, kind of thorough guides with, with all of the pictures. Now, uh, around 87% of all the information of, oh, sorry, of all our users process animation before they see any text. So you may have seen on the first slide, I did kind of catch it there. I added an animation and I can guarantee that around at least 80% of you looked at the animation first before you even looked at any of the text or anything else that was on that slide. And the last part, the best reason it is it's 100% fun. I absolutely love animating SVGs. I learned a lot about from Robin as well. Robin is the SVG king and uh, it is just really, really fun. Now, before before we go into the demo, there is something that I want to mention and that's around limitations. Now, uh, the one thing I didn't want to is obviously talk to you about the demo and then someone tagged me on Twitter to say, Christine, I've watched the demo, you lied to me. <laughs> so I have put a couple of limitations. However, last night I came up with another idea on how to overcome the um, limitations and I'm going to show you that today as well. So the first kind of limitations that everyone will be aware of is that there is a payload limit on adaptive cards. This means that uh, we are limited as to uh, the size of an image or an SVG that we can pass in line. Uh, if the uh, card payload exceeds the limitations that we have, the card will literally just not render in any application. Then uh, by using inline C, uh, in the, uh, SVGs, we do have some limitations around the CSS attributes that you can use. So things like Gaussian blur, linear gradients, and so some of the other things are unfortunately not supported in the inline HTML uh, uh, within the adaptive card just yet. Again, I have found a way to work around that too. Then uh, they are not supported in model windows. So this is only applicable to uh, the SVGs that are, are written in line as well within the adaptive card. Like I said before, I have found a workaround to this as well. And the last, the worst reason, the best limitation is they are just addictive. So once you start animating things, I promise you there is literally no way uh, back from there. So let's get into the demo instead. So what we're going to do is I'm going to animate a very basic SVG first, and then I'll show you how we can add that to the adaptive card itself. OK, so for the uh, kind of animation I'm going to do today is uh, Disney logo. Uh, as we know, we have the Power Platform Conference in just over two weeks. Uh, one thing that I'm super excited for, apart from the conference, which is going to be incredible, is visiting Disneyland. I'm a huge Disney fan and I thought this would be a perfect kind of use case for, for animation today. So to uh, kind of go over the structure of an SVG for anyone that hasn't worked with an SVG before, SVG is comprised really of, uh, I guess, three main elements. So we always have the opening SVG tag here. So this is what we will declare things like the namespace. This is what we will declare width, height, if we want to the view box and all of that. Then we have our object. So that could be a path, as you can see. Now paths will comprise of pretty much tags. These are all the kind of cubic beziers, all of the curves that you get in an SVG. 
or geometrical shapes. So that could be like a rectangle and eclipse, uh, pretty much anything, a circle as an example. And then at the very end of the SVG, we will have the closing SVG tag. Now, if we want to add any styles, we know that we can't link uh, any style sheets within the SVG. We have to use inline styles. So to do that, we have to open a style tag in here. Style, and then we'll close that before I forget. And then we can start declaring the styles directly within here. So let's uh, start with the selector. So for the selector, we will just use path. We only have one path in here. Uh, if we want to, we can add obviously a class as an example. So we can just say uh, class, let's say uh, we can just do it uh, test as an example, and we can just uh, do test as an example. So you can do that just like you would normally in CSS. Then we'll open the curly brackets. And before we start adding any animation, let's actually create an animation. So to do animation with SVGs, we have three options. Normally we have JavaScript, uh, we have uh, CSS, and then we also have what's called SMIL. SMIL stands for Synchronized Multimedia Integrated Language. Now, uh, we know that we can't add inline JavaScript in here, so that's out of the box for us. Um, and then SMIL uh, is great, but SMIL isn't supported on mobile devices as well. So for today's demo, we are going to use CSS just because it is supported on pretty much every browser, including Internet Explorer. If anyone is using it, hopefully no one is. So to do that, we will start by declaring keyframes. So that's how we do animation in CSS. And then we'll open the curly brackets. Now within here, we have two options. We can either declare the starting and the finishing point of animation. This will be uh, done using from and to, or we can declare what's called checkpoints. Well, I call them checkpoints. I don't think they're actually called checkpoints. So to do that, we can just say, uh, let's just give um, the animation some names. So for the name, let's just start with, as an example, fade. So that will be the name of animation. And let's just say we'll go from, and then we'll go from opacity zero. So we want that to be uh, transparent at first. And then we want that to go to and we'll go to opacity one. So we want this to kind of breathe into our screen. Now, once we've done that, all we have to do is assign that animation to our SVG. So I'm just going to pop that into here and we'll do fade. Let's say duration, we can just do three seconds as an example, and then we can just do infinite. So it's doing it infinitely. And as you can see, that's animated already. Now, one thing that I really dislike is when you can see that resetting point. So you can see that after three seconds, it's just literally resetting the animation. So to counteract that, we can actually use alternate. And alternate will alternate the finishing point of the animation. So you will now see the kind of breathe in and breathe in, uh, breathe out effect. So you can see that it's not disappearing and resetting the animation anymore. It's actually kind of breathing in and breathing um, out. So that's one way of, of doing an animation. Now let's just add some color as an example. So to add color again, I can add this within this keyframe. So we can declare as many as we want, or we can add another keyframe. I will add another keyframe just because I want to show you a different structure of, of keyframes. So we will just do, let's say, keyframe frames and then we'll just call it a uh, color as an example and then we'll open the curly brackets now for this one we are going to use checkpoints so with checkpoints we declare each of the points of the animation at which we want something else to happen so to do that we can do let's say we'll do increment it by 20 percent so we'll uh, let me just quickly do that 20 percent and then we'll change let's say fill to be uh blue and then i will just quickly copy and paste because we know we don't want to rewrite all of that and then we will increment this by 20 percent, so that would be 60 80 and 100 and all we have to do now is just change these colors so i can just say i want this to be green and i want this to be yellow i want this to be pink and i want this to be let's say uh, purple as an example. And then once we've done that, we again need to assign the animation. So we can add the animation straight after this one. We can just separate it with a comma and then add, I think we called it color. Did we call it the English way color? The American way color. Perfect. Add the duration as well. So we'll just make five seconds so it's not jittering on the screen and we'll just make it infinite. And we should hopefully see in a second is that this will be changing colors. We'll just give it a second to uh, load. Color, five seconds, a color, color. Have we done everything? Um, Oh, I think I have too many of these. There we go. Let's just quickly have a look. Oh, I'm not sure why that's not changing color. <laughs> Let's just quickly check what I have I done. Have I made a mistake? 20, 30, 60, 80, 100 uh, percent keyframes. Oh, I'm not sure why that's not changing color. Um, color. OK, let me just quickly remove that for some reason. I'm not sure what's happened there. How very bizarre. OK, so we have demo demons, as you can see. I am not quite sure what's happened uh, there. Let me just quickly pop a random snippet in here to see if that will that will work instead. 
And then let me just quickly call that uh, site as an example. I'm not sure if my browser just needs refreshing. OK, for some reason that's not actually loading. I'm not sure what's happened with the uh, browsing here. I will just quickly go on to. Oh, that's why. Is it because I had 1000% over there? OK, so uh, to counteract that again, I can fix that quickly. So I already have a kind of pre-generated uh, animations for this anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. We will just quickly go to the Disney logo. So this is what I was going to quickly build for you. I'm not really sure what's happened there, so apologies to anyone watching this back. So once we have the animation ready, now we can actually add that to our um, adaptive card. So if you've ever worked with Power Apps as an example, uh, to add an SVG to your uh, Power Apps, the first thing that we need to do is we need to encode the actual SVG itself. So to do that, I will just click on, let's just quickly add an image to here. and the way we do it is we'll just open it in here. So to start with, we will do with uh, data, then we will do image and then slash SVG plus XML. There we go. Now we can declare the char set as well if we wanted to. And then after this, this is where we will pop our SVG text. So if I was to just quickly navigate back to my, to my um, Disney logo here, we'll copy all of that, control C, and then we'll go over here and then we just pop that at the end there pop that into here. And as you can see, we now have this animation in um, in the adaptive card. Now that's one way of doing it. Again, this is quite simple animation. And one thing that I like doing is really kind of creating pretty things so like neon glows, Gaussian blast, like I said, and more kind of advanced animation. Uh, so if you don't want to do it this way, I will show you another way of how to do it. So if you've worked with adaptive cards before, you'll know that you can link any image externally from uh, any kind of host website. So last night I was getting very creative and I thought, hmm, how, why don't I find an SVG hosting website as an example, add that SVG there and link it back and it worked. So what I've done is I have put together a couple of SVGs just to quickly show you how that works. So the website that we're going to use is called SVG Share or SVG uh, I think that's how you say it. So all we have to do in here is we have to add the SVG into here. So I'll just go to choose file. Then we have to choose the SVG. So I'm just going to go for, let's say the rainbow SVG. Uh, that was actually the cloud. And I will just refresh the website again. The demo demons are coming in, which is absolutely fine. We always expect that to happen at some point. Let's try that again. And we'll go to rainbow, go to share, and that will generate the link for us. So now that will generate the link. So all I have to do is I have to go and get the uh, image source of that uh, specific image. So I'll just get that from here. We have to make sure that it has the format at the end as well. Otherwise, it will not render. And all we have to do is if I was to just go to the sunny icon as an example and go to the URL here, all I have to do is just replace that. And again, this is quite small, so I'm just going to make it slightly larger. And we'll do large. And as you can see, we now have that animation. So if you wanted to have some neon glow as an example, let me just change that to dark. And we will add one of uh, the things that I have done recently. So we'll just go to add SVG. We'll go to cheese file and we'll go for the Xbox one as an example. And I will not show you what that's doing yet. We'll go to share and then I'll scroll to the bottom and get that SVG file from here. Control C, go to adaptive card and I will just pop that on the top here. And then if you give it a second, uh, this is an animated kind of drawing neon SVG. So in a second, you'll see the Xbox logo and then it will pop like a neon light. There we go. Again, uh, we have an issue with a bit of a, a view box around the edges, but that's uh, expected as well. That's something we can uh, fix. And that is it for today's demo. So uh, I've shared the links as well and I'll pop them in the chat. And I know that David kindly offered to uh, share the links as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'm handing over to you, David. Awesome. Thank you, Christine. Well, what can I say? Holy cow. <laughs> right. I mean, both those demos today are absolutely epic. So love to see the community getting creative with this uh, and all of the uh, demos and examples and in use cases as well. Really fantastic to see how this can be used together, how the technology can be better together across uh, M365 as well as Power Platform. Uh, it's really, really uh, fantastic and amazing. So thank you both Robin and Christine. I think we uh, need a round of applause and celebration for everybody today, uh, as well as those in the chat. So thank you all for being a part of that. Let's wrap this up today. We want to thank you again, and the recording will be available within 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 PNP YouTube channel. You will not be able to download it in the chat. You'll see that it's ready to download. Uh, you'll think you can download it, but you can't. 
So uh, what you want to do is go to aka.ms forward slash m365 slash videos. That will take you to the YouTube channel. You can subscribe, and as soon as it's uploaded, you'll get an alert. So definitely go subscribe today. Uh, you can also be alerted by following on Twitter uh, at m Microsoft 365 dev and at m365 pnp. Uh, the next general dev call is going to be one week from today. Same bat channel, same bat time, September 15th, 7 a.m. Pacific. Uh, Viva Connection SharePoint Framework one week from today, uh, 7 a.m. as well. So you can access all of these calls from aka.ms forward slash m365 slash calls. Thank you again, everybody, for being fantastic. You are amazing community contributors. Thank you, Robin and Christine, again, to present today on some fantastic demos. Have a wonderful rest of your week, everybody, and a wonderful weekend. Thank you.